what is the goal we should chase? I think when you look at entrepreneurs throughout history who were wildly successful, they pursued something that was important to them and that was a change they wanted to see. And I think that in a lot, one of the reasons I like I kind of sometimes make fun of goal setting experts is they they do things like, you know, hey, Ajit, write down the biggest number you've ever thought about earning, you know, write it down. Like, no, 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 don't write it yet. Like, think bigger, think bigger. And now now that you have it down, cross it out and double it. And that's your goal for the year. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a pretty myopic way of looking at growth. That's a pretty myopic way of looking at, at contribution at what you're going to do at the change you're going to make. When I. I have obsessively researched and studied successful people. And when you look at the vast majority of them, there was something very exciting of what, about what they were doing. There was something that was enthralling about what they were, they were doing. There was something that was very important to them about what they were doing. And so I think that often we get into this environment, maybe in the entrepreneurial space, where people are encouraged to look at top line revenue and how much are you selling and how many millions are you making, which I don't think is a bad thing at all. However, if it's to the exclusion of what you actually want to do, to the exclusion of what excites you, um, you know, I, I know a lot of people who make a ton of money and feel very hollow and are frustrated with it. I've actually, I have a podcast, uh, you, we talked about my podcast, I have an episode called um, What to Do When Money Stops Mattering. Because you get to the point as an entrepreneur where if you have enough money in the bank, you can't feel scared about money anymore or you don't feel as scared about money. And it's not as motivating to, to have to build that resource, to have to build that backstop. And so I think, you know, doing something that is personally intriguing to you creates wild success. And I, and history proves it, you know, history really proves it out. If you look at the people who have changed the world, if you go back through history and you think of the people you remember, the people who matter to be remembered, they were on a quest to do something. They were excited about what they were doing. And I think that's, that's important. And I don't, I don't think that that's talked about enough. I think, you know, there's, there's a lot of people who want to put people on a path or who, who want, again, like aim at a revenue number. If that's really exciting to you, then that's great. But what is it that you really want to see change? Who is it that you really want to help? You know, I always tell entrepreneurs, if, if you're having trouble figuring out what direction to go, start with who you want to help. Like, what problem do you want to solve for people? What issue do you want to change in the world? And oftentimes that's incredibly motivating. That's so powerful. That's so powerful. And that's a very different and interesting way of looking at goals. Thank you for sharing that. Sure. My curiosity is when we are approaching these goals, when we are approaching these, these directions, there is, at least from my point of view, and I would love to be challenged on this and hear your take on it, is I feel there is a journey where there's a starting of an entrepreneurial journey. And that comes from desire to, yes, change something probably, but it also is a desire to make money and have mm -hmm. the freedom while making money, mm -hmm. uh, more so. And this is kind of, let's say, arbitrarily putting it, let's say it's your first million, mm -hmm. right? Is where you go, I'm going to just work my butt off because I want to get to this place and it's safe. And that's probably where all that goal setting comes in, where you go, oh, well, let's chase this, let's chase this, you know, double the number, double the number, double the number. And then you get to a safety level and then it stops to matter, kind of like what you said. I feel more entrepreneurs are in that stage of hitting security. They're not actually in a place of going further from security. Do you, oh, the do numbers you prove it out. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if you just look at the numbers. So these numbers are from a few years ago. They're pre-COVID. And we, we did a really extensive like breakdown of the numbers. And so just a few years ago, there was 29 million, 29 and a half million businesses in the United States. 16 million were under $40,000 a year. So Ooh. over half. Um, from 40 to 100,000, there was 6 million. So 22 out of 29 million under 100K. Uh, from 100 to 300, there was 1.7. From 300 to a million, there was 1.9. So you take that totality and, and under a million dollars was about 25 out of 29 and a half million businesses, a little over 25 out of 29 and a half million businesses. And so, sorry, not 25, 26. And so the vast majority of entrepreneurs are, are really in a struggle for survival. And so when you're first starting out, you know, chasing a revenue goal, doing something that that um, is going to create some stability for you, it's everything. But at the same time, I think you can still do that while doing something that's exciting for you and doing something that intrigues you and doing something that you feel like gives you personal momentum. I think um, a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck because they're doing something that they don't really like. 
and they're climbing an uphill battle of not having the momentum of feeling like they're actually doing something that's exciting for them. Early on in the entrepreneurial journey, <clears throat> if you have clear outcomes and you have a clear process to follow, you know, that can feel really good. But then so many entrepreneurs have businesses that grow and then recede and grow and then recede, or they start going up the path of, of gaining higher revenues, and then they have a hard time continuing. And I think a lot of that has to do with not really being lit up by what they're doing, not being excited about what they're doing. I think at the beginning of becoming an entrepreneur, when somebody says, hey, I want to do this, they're usually getting away from something. They're getting away from working for somebody else. They're, they're trying to get away from not having the freedom they don't want or the, that they want. They're getting away from not having enough money. They're getting away from not having enough status, um, feeling like they're not good enough. Like Those are the things that compel us at the beginning of, of our career and then might come back later on. And then there's a second stage where it's, that doesn't need to happen anymore. You have enough money. You've, you've proven yourself. You know, you've put yourself out there. And then the question I think entrepreneurs need to start asking is like, what am I running towards? Because in the beginning, we're running away from. And that's compelling like crazy. I think for some entrepreneurs, it's there for their whole lives. You know, they were bullied as kids. They had challenges with money. They came from a poor family. Um, they never had resources. They never had what they wanted. And so that just compels them their whole lives. And they, they never get to the place where they say, wait a second, I don't feel this drive anymore. I don't feel this push anymore. Like, what do I do next? And I think that next is like, what do I really want to do? What do I want to change? What am I excited about? And if you can back that up and in that process of running away from you start asking yourself, like, what do I really want to impact? How do I really want to change things? Um, I think it can lead you to maybe a more exciting path or maybe a more compelling path.